Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. In this episode, we're going to look at the purpose of the data link layer. We'll be discussing the data link layer, IEEE 802 LAN and MAN data link sublayers, providing access to the media. And then finally, we're going to talk about data link layer standards. This episode is part of my series on introduction to networks. I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. As a reminder, the data link layer in the OSI model, it lives down towards the bottom. It's layer two, so it's at the bottom of the OSI model. It's also included in that network interface layer in the TCP IP model. So it's at the bottom here. The data link layer is responsible for communication between devices on your network. It's not necessarily end to end between your client and your web server. It's concerned with delivering data from one device to another device on your network to another device to another device to finally getting to its destination. So it, it takes many hops through there. A common example would be that data would travel from your PC to the router. That's layer two, the data link layer responsible for moving that data. Then once to your router, it would go to your ISP. That is that's the data link layer moving that data there. In the ISP, it moves from router to router to router to get to its destination until it gets to an edge router at the company where the web server is at. And the network layer is responsible for getting the data there from that last router. And then we go from that router to the web server. Data link layer is responsible to move that data from one device to another device. Each hop is where the data link layer. It allows the upper layers in the OSI model to access the physical layer. It's, it's sort of that connection point between the upper layers and that physical layer. Also, it performs air detection and it rejects corrupt frames. Now notice, I said it does air detection. It doesn't do air correction. It doesn't fix a problem. All it does is it identifies a problem and then once it identifies that problem, it gets rid of that frame. Now, if, when you get rid of that frame, it needs to be resent, but that's handled by the upper layers. Layer three and above handles resending that data. Data two just identifies that there's an error and then um, eliminates that frame. It, it deletes that frame, or we typically call it, we, it rejects that frame. Here we have several different standards. And if you can look, the different standards sometimes cross layer one and layer two because they have to start looking at how to, what medium it, it is before we actually put it on the medium. And when we break down the data link layer, there's actually two layers to that data link layer. As you can see right here, we have the data link layer, which is up here and down across here, but we broke it into two layers. We have the LLC sublayer and the MAC sublayer. The LLC sublayer communicates between the networking software and the upper layers. So it allows that communication to happen with whatever's above me, I can communicate down through here. And then it also devices, it also allows the, um, the software to communicate with the actual devices themselves, your network card inside of your computer. The Mac sublayer is responsible for data encapsulation and then media access control. So that's where we put on the header and the trailer to make our frame. And then we control access to the media. Can you send now? Can you not send now? That's what this data link Mac sublayer is about. Providing access to the media. Packets exchange between nodes. They go through lots and lots of data link. Now, what do we mean by this between the nodes? Think about your data going between your client and the server. Your, your, your server could be a web server located halfway around the world, and it has to go through lots of different networks. And every time it goes through a different network, it goes through this data link layer, and it gets changed, and, and it, it processes and change. And then at each hop, every time it goes through a router, and every time it goes through a router, we call it a hop on the network. You hop onto the next network. It, what happens is, is that frame comes into the router the router de-encapsulated. So it takes the frame off. It looks at the upper layer information, layer three, the IP address and says, 
do I know how to get to this IP address? Is it, is it connected to me? No, I don't. But the routing protocol says if I send it out this interface, it can get there. And so what happens is it re-encapsulates it with the MAC address of the next router on the network. And then it sends it off to, out, in, out an interface to the next router. When it gets to the next router, that process can starts again. It takes off the layer two header and trailer. It looks at that data and says, is this my IP address? If it's not my IP address, let's encapsulate it again and send it on to the next device that gets it closer to its destination. We have a lot of different standards. Once again, we, we thank these organizations for coming in and making these standards. We have the IEEE Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers. These guys come up with the electronic standards, the encoding, the decoding standards. We have ITU, ISO, ANSI. They all are making these different standards work and each of them have their own little area of expertise to make our layer two standards work. It was my pleasure to provide you with this wonderful episode on the purpose of the data link layer. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, and of course, depending upon what platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All of my socials and contact information are on my website, kevtechify.com. And you can get all these episodes in video and podcast form. In the upper right is my playlist for my series on introduction to networks. In the bottom right is one of my favorite videos that I linked just for you. Thank you so much for watching this episode of my series on introduction to networks. Once again, I'm Kevin. This is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.